start with the with the topic uh, it's a equine colic challenges in imaging and uh, uh, and diagnosis uh, so first of all uh, each and every person might be having a knowledge or come across the cases in which there is a equine colic is there and the, and the, you might be having experience uh, that the horses they are prone to colic more than uh, other uh, domestic animals uh, so because the nature has not been so kind in terms of the GIT, uh, in terms of horses, uh, because there are few points are there in GIT, especially in the large colon, there are few points are there where the diameter suddenly or drastically, I'll say, reduces uh, from one point to the next point. So that, that point become prone to, the, to, the, to obstruction. So these are the few points which I'll be discussing uh, that how to assess those points. And secondly, there are a few anatomical uh, 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 landmarks are there, which you must take care while diagnosing uh, a colicky horse. And there are a few other points which you need to take care at the time of management as well. So let's start with, so my presentation so my presentation will be main uh, will be on uh, applied anatomy of equine GIT. This is very important because the equine GIT is different from the other animals, from the ruminants, from the dogs. It's not like that uh, because most of the digestion in equine take place in the large colon, but in dogs or in, in ruminants as well, that most of the digestion, they take place in the, in the stomach or rumen or reticulum uh, or omasum, abomasum in case of ruminants and dogs, like small intestine or the stomach, most of the digestion take place. But in contrast, in horses, uh, most of the digestion that takes place in the large colon. So that's why the horses, they are prone to the large colon problem. Large colon impaction is there. Large colon valvulus is there. Distension is there. Or some displacement of large colon is there. So because it's a very active part of intestine. So that's why the problem happens at this part of intestine. So then various diagnostic tests to determine the challenges in its management. So whenever, whenever you need to diagnose or whenever you need to examine a horse, you, you come across a number of challenges. I always consider uh, each and every case as a different case. So you can't determine, predetermine that this case is likely the coming, this horse which I'm examining, this is, will have a particular, uh, particular uh, diagnosis, particular uh, cause of colic without diagnostic test, because there are a few diagnostic tests are there, which will help us to overcome uh, the, the different uh, problems in diagnosis. So there are challenges are there while determining the medical or surgical, because first of all, there is always a conflict is there in each and every institution. There is always a conflict is there that whether this is a case fit for medicinal uh, purpose or we should refer to the surgery department. So there are few tests are there. So diagnostic uh, test and physical examination findings are there, which will help us to determine whether this, this case should be uh, suitable for the medicinal treatment or we should uh, refer to the surgery department or surgical facility. So then comes the management of the colic. So these are the, the my aim of the lecture will be on these four aspects. First of all, colic is always an emergency each and every month because because horse is likely to die or it can be it can lead to fatal consequences if the the horses are not treated at a proper time and in a proper way so that can lead to um, to the death of a horse and you know the horses are they are quite costly then they are being used as a uh, for a livelihood they are used for player purpose or sometimes they are used for performance as well so they they are, they are basically, uh, they're costly animal. So timely uh, diagnosis and the management of the colic can help us to save that particular animal. So it has been seen that 90 to 95% of the colic, they are non-surgical. It means they can be treated without surgery. So only five to 10% of the cases are there in which we, we need surgery. So we need to diagnose uh, those cases in a 
a quick manner so that surgical intervention can be done early surgical intervention can be done and the the prognosis uh, should be uh, in in towards uh, uh, the it should be excellent prognosis uh, otherwise if we delay such type of 5 to 10% of the cases then prognosis can be grave in such a case. So 80% of the colic can be idiopathic. Sometimes the cause is not known, but sometimes the colic is there. Uh, especially we have seen uh, recently, we are coming across a number of males in advanced stage of pregnancy in which there is a, a small to a torsion of uterus is there and that leads to colic as well. Sometimes these cases can remain misdiagnosed as well. And there are sometimes cystitis can also lead to colic. Sometimes there is urolithic there um, that can also lead to colic as well and enteritis because of enteritis because of salmonella or sometimes ehrlichiosis is there or sometimes there is a, uh, a horse has a habit of eating the sand and the soil so that can also lead to enteritis and that can ultimately lead to colic as well so uh, first of all uh, there are basically whenever we uh, uh, we approach a particular colicky horse, either it can be a partial obstruction or it can be a complete obstruction or it can be complete obstruction with strangulation. So there are the three, basically these are the three common causes of uh, or cause of colic in horses. So partial obstruction, just come to the partial obstruction, just green part, this one, it shows us the partial obstruction of intestine and the gases, you can say gases can easily pass uh, around from around these obstruction and some of uh, the gases they can now go back as well and they can lead to mild distension of the intestine uh, a borrow to that particular obstructing partially obstructing mass so this leads to the mild colic this leads to mild colic and it can be treated easily it can be treated easily with uh, with the medicine we can give iv fluids we can give analgesics we can give um, even uh, uh, paraffin so so that the, these partial obstruction can pass on very easily then if, so if there is an impaction is there suppose there is an impaction of the uh, of the pelvic flexure is there or impaction of the uh, cecum is there or transverse colon impaction is there or sometimes there is a big fecal in the small all colon is there so that can lead to the complete obstruction so here it will sir, be you, sir your sli my slide is not visible uh, okay partial obstruction normally it leads to uh, the mild colic so there is some obstruction some of the gases they can some of the again your slide is not coming through. sir pardon again your slide is not visible any it is visible huh visible okay, okay. yeah I, i'm sharing the screen yes is it yeah, visible no. Visible, visible, visible. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes, sir, it is visible, sir. So if there is a complete obstruction is there, then there is a marked distension. If you see over here in this part, uh, so you can see that this is a transfer section. So it's still the, the blood uh, and the blood supply is there, and but it's markedly distended. And because of the distension, uh, the nerve endings, they, they get, uh, uh, they are under stress and ultimately it leads to the moderate to severe colic. So such type of cases, they can be, they can be treated with medicine or alternatively, if it doesn't respond to the medical treatment, we might have to go to the surgical treatment of such cases. If there is a complete obstruction is there. So how to check this type of, these type of cases are always challenging. So we need to identify such cases which, which has a complete obstruction and doesn't respond to the medical treatment. And so these cases need to refer to the surgical facility as early as possible so that we can save the life of animal. Now comes to the third category. Third category, there is a complete obstruction with strangulation. This is a very, very per acute condition. It's a per acute condition in which the in, uh, intestine, they're strangulated. And if you see the transverse section, it's a blue color. I have shown that as a blue color. It means it's a ischemic uh, part of the intestine is there. Ischemia has happened. So that leads to per acute colic. And such a type of cases can't be treated with medicine. So you have to refer to the surgery or go for surgical intervention immediately. 
time is is um is very less in such type of horses we have treated such of type of horses when they arrived to us immediately we opened up we saw that there is a strangulation is there before surgery then we uh, opened up and uh, we were able to save such type of animals so wasting the uh, the time on the medical treatment of such cases can be fatal for for the horses so now it's a mild moderate and severe colic these are the three categories which i have discussed now comes to the just in a nutshell comparison of digestion if we compare the digestion you see in horses equine so see 45 for this uh, 45% and here in cecum uh, so 61% of digestion that part take part in the large part of the colon large colon uh, large intestine sorry large part, uh, intestine so cecum as well as large intestine so only i'll say 40% that takes place in the stomach as well as small intestine if you see if you compare with the ruminants 70% in stomach and only 10% uh, in large uh, large intestine so uh, so you can see uh, so that's why we are getting a number of cases of stomach uh, rumen reticulum omasum abomasum problem in ruminants because that part of the intestine is very active in digestion so uh, and uh, so uh because the large intestine is very active in in equine so we are getting so that's why this part is mostly involved uh in a different anomalies which can which are anomalies or diseases or or obstruction or uh, i'll say displacement so let's come to the applied anatomy so applied anatomy there are few uh so this is uh, if you if we, let's start with the with the right fig, uh, figure so this is the stomach so this part is uh, the mouth and this part is the tail uh, tail of uh, of a of a horse so stomach is there so stomach it has uh, then the duodenum and the, from the duodenum uh, it has uh, jejunum and the, then then ileum ileum enters into the cecum so this is the first part of large intestine cecum so cecum is basically a comma shape and it has approximately uh, 40 40 to 45 liter of the capacity so this part uh, it is a comma shape and it starts from the here is the right flank region here is the right flank from here it extends up to um, up to the mid abdomen uh, mid abdomen region here is the mid abdomen region uh from here like start the the large intestine large colon i'll say large colon the first part of the large colon is the right ventral colon so this is right ventral colon so right ventral colon uh it will it will travel cranially and it will go towards the sternum so here it will it will be it will go and here will be the sternum so sternum at the level of sternum it will form the sternal flexure and it will turn towards the left side this is the left side this is the left ventral colon if you see this is left ventral colon so left ventral colon will travel towards the pelvis caudally it will travel towards cord uh, caudally towards the uh, uh, to the pelvis and it will form a hair pin like structure if you see uh, it will form a hair pin like structure uh and and it will form left dorsal colon this is the left dorsal colon and left dorsal colon will travel cranially towards the diaphragm and the, at the level of diaphragm it will form a diaphragmatic flexure and it will go towards the right side and it will form right uh, right dorsal colon so this is the right dorsal colon from right dorsal colon the the colon it will travel to transversely towards the left side travel to, so this is that's why it is called transverse colon so this portion is the transverse colon and from transverse colon uh, starts with the, there is a, another part is a small colon so this is a small colon uh, and it, then then it will form a rectum and and the fecal balls and the manure will go out okay so if you see in this picture if you see there is a few circulations are there so which is very important so that's why i need to stress on these applied portion because during surgery or during even diagnosis as well whenever you need to perform the parietal examination so these circulations they are very important so these circulation if you see the cecum has circulations and as well as bands and the ventral part of the large colon the right ventral colon 
left ventral colon it will have secretions and once it forms the left dorsal colon uh, so one is from the left dorsal colon and the right dorsal colon as well as the transverse colon they will not have secretions at all so uh, once the, so in nutshell i can say the ventral part of the colon will have circulation the dorsal part of the colon will not have circulations so this uh, this anatomical uh, landmark called concentration i'll say or difference i'll say between the dorsal and ventral part of colon can help us while manipulating uh, during surgery so whenever we need to perform the surgery we have to see uh, where is the circulated part and where is the non circulated part so there we can reach to the impacted part very easily so the first part which is very important is this one this one is the pelvic flexor if you see the diameter the the left ventral colon this is left ventral colon uh the diameter is approximately 25 to 30 cm and at the level of pelvic flexor the diameter immediately reduces to 10 cm you see one third decrease in the diameter so that's why this is the most common site of obstruction second common site of obstruction is the transverse colon if you see the right dorsal colon when it forms the transverse colon here to the the diameter that decreases from 35 30 to 35 cm to 15 cm so this becomes the second common site of impaction as well as obstruction so then even the uh, the small colon they can have fecolith as well so which i'll be discussing later on so this is uh, on your left side upper left side if you see this is the cecum this is the cecum and this is the right ventral part of the colon a right ventral part of the colon it will go up so here is the here is the pelvic flexor which is very important part uh, while diagnosing or when so whenever you perform a parietal examination here whenever you perform the parietal examination this part should be palpable and if it is impacted it can be easily palpable uh, impacted part the normally uh, the size whenever you put hand inside the rectum uh, the size of the pelvic flexor should not be bigger than your hand and if it is a bigger than your hand it means it can be a distension it can be an impaction of pelvic flexor is there so this is the third figure um like the, this figure this one is the uh, is the is the anatomy of the horse when you see from the top of the horse when you see from the top of this horse so if you see over here stomach is there and this is the cecum okay so this is this is the dorsal part of the colon because it's a circulated so i can easily see say a non circulated sorry it's a non circulated so it's a dorsal part of the colon it's a circulated this part is circulated it means it's a ventral part of the colon from here it forms a transverse colon and then small colon this is a small colon so this is this is the applied or not me so that's why whenever you need to perform a diagnostic test or whenever you need to perform a surgery in a particular horse so you need to see uh, the cecum as well you need to see the ventral part of the colon you need to uh, palpate the small small colon you need to palpate the pelvic flexor and but this portion sometime they are out of our approach sometime we can't uh, we can't palpate uh, the cranial part of large colon so i'll i'll be i'll be discussing those ones as well later on so this is this is the part which is the main portion which is a main culprit portion for uh, for the uh, the more incidence a uh, higher incidence of colic in horses so this is a pelvic flexor so this is the left ventral part of the colon and this is the left dorsal colon it means it is one is non circulated this portion is non circulated and if you see the circulations these circulations so so see the diameter from here the diameter is approximately 30 cm and here the diameter is approximately 10 cm so that's why uh, whenever uh, some ingesta is coming from a bigger part and immediately there is a smaller part is there um and that that part uh, impaction of that portion likely to happen so if you see uh, this is the picture which will tell you that this is uh, um, this this portion uh, is the left part and this is the pelvic flexor and if whenever we need to perform the surgery here this is the most common site of obstruction this is the pelvic flexor 
so i already discussed this is the most common this is second most common of a site of uh, obstruction transverse colon transverse colon this is the th this is the third most small colon is the third most common site of obstruction due to fecal lith foreign bodies and taroliths so foreign bodies some of the horses they have vice to eat some plastics or ropes or some um, even um, some other foreign particles as well and those foreign particles are uh, in, uh, they they are likely to lodge in this part of the intestine so this is this is the small colon so if you see small colon is again circulated so this is circulated circulation uh, is there in small colon as well so fourth most common site of uh, obstruction uh, is the cecum so this cecum uh, likely impaction likely happen uh, in this part of the the intestine so that can be the fourth most common site of and sand colic sometime there is especially in the in the area where there is a sand is lot of sand is there and even some of the uh, of the horses they are the habit of uh, even licking the walls uh, eating uh, the cements as well they can they can ingest the soil they can ingest the sand as well and that sand likely to settle down in the right ventral part of the colon right ventral so here the sand colic sand sand likely to settle down so that's why so these are the so now into into susception and ascarid impaction so there is a, this ascarid is a type of worm is there so into susception can happen in small intestine and ascarid impaction can ha happen as well in the small intestine so this can be another cause of colic in horses but one thing is the most common common things happen commonly so that's why the pelvic flexure and the transverse colon they are the common sites as well as the small colon this small colon uh, fecolith uh, these are the three most common i have seen uh, during my practice as a equine surgeon so these are the three most common site for obstruction so history whenever you need to see the uh, to treat a horse so history is very important so history uh, colic pawing is there so chances of the animal stretches its uh, front leg as well as hind leg sweating can be there animal lies down rolling is there injury marks is there if you see there are some injury marks near the eye or in the tuber coxae so there are some injury marks can be there so on the tuber coxae so this indicate that animal has rolled a lot it means it's a uh, it's a, there is a uh, colic is there severe colic is there so there is there can be distension as well if you see there is a distension this is a distension because of the transverse colon impaction we did a surgery in this horse then we found that uh, the moderate distension was because of the transverse colon impaction and here it was a marked abdominal distension was there it was because of the large colon volvulus that was animal was showing a severe colic you can see the the difference in the moderate distension and the severe distension in particular horse severe distension is there chances of volvulus chances of strangulation of intestine is there so physical examination whenever you need to physically examine is first thing is you need to see the mouth see the color of the mucous membrane see the crt as well capillary refilled hind i see the status of whether it's a is a is a dehydrated mucus or it's a well hydrated mucus so you need to see these things uh, open up the mouth if there is a, if there is a, this is a normal this one is a normal mucous membrane so from here the deterioration is there if you see this one this mucous membrane it's a quite cyanotic it means there is strangulation is there here there is a muddy color violet color uh, cyanotic mucous membrane and even you can see arrow if you see the arrows so these are uh, these are the uh, the cyanotic lines are there we say it cyanotic lines if these lines start appearing on the uh, on the gingiva above the incisors it means the animal is developing um, septicemia animal is having strangulations so we need to perform the surgery you even you can say even even toxic lines these are the toxic lines they can start appearing on gingiva as well so this is a normal one 
and third eyelids can also be third eyelids that can also be examined in order to see if there is a particular hemorrhages are there or if there is a congestion is there or congested mucous membrane that is associated with endotoxemia so uh, heart rate from the facial artery from the transverse uh, facial artery or from uh, auscultation um, just underneath the triceps muscle so auscultation these three methods can be used for measurement of the heart rate measuring the heart rate is a very important parameter in order to see uh, the response of the treatment second is to decide whether this this animal should be continued the medical treatment or we should refer to the surgical treatment so that's why serial estimation of heart rate is very important so uh, if the heart rate is less than 40 it means it's a mild colic 40 to 60 it's a moderate 60 to 100 it means uh, serious animal is going towards a serial serious condition and if it's a, a more than 100 it means animal is having uh, some strangulation or animal is not responding to the medical treatment and it's a really bad we have to open up the animal immediately so here i told you the partial obstruction the same uh, uh, figure so the heart rate will remain 40 to 50 so animal pain will be mild sometime they are off feed and they are dull as well so but if if there is a strangulation is there the heart rate likely to go up to the 90 pawing is there rolling is there and another thing is uh, the animal doesn't respond to the medical doesn't respond to the medical treatment so uh, this is evaluation of uh, um, of barbarigomy intestinal sounds so whenever uh, uh, the a colicky horse is presented to you after estimation of the heart rate after evaluation of the mucous membrane the third thing which you should do is uh, you should see the intestinal sounds normally the intestinal sounds should be estimated or evaluated from the right flank region here is the cecum so cecum cecal sound can easily be auscultated and can easily be heard so there should be um, there should be uh, two to three sounds two to two to three sounds in one minute so you have to keep the stethoscope dial on the on the uh, right flank first and hear it very patiently in a patient manner so that you should be able to see uh, the toilet flushing like sound or gutter sound uh, at this place in the right flank region. If such type of sounds are, are there, it means it's an animal is having a barbarigami. Intestinal movement is there. It means animal can respond to the medical treatment. But once these barbarigami are absent and uh, you are not able to, to hear the uh, intestinal sounds, it means animal is not responding to the medical treatment uh, we should think about um, using the surgical method of uh, management of colic so even all four quadrant can be auscultated simultaneously in order to uh, observe or in order to listen uh, the heart sound then the, the, the next part for the diagnostic will be to pass passage of nasogastric tube. So nasogastric tube, uh, it will serve many purposes. One thing is, one thing is like when you put the naso, and because all the participants might be knowing that horse doesn't vomit. Because there is an anatomical uh, condition uh, placement of uh, uh, the esophagus on the stomach in such a way that vomiting doesn't happen. So whenever there is a distension of the stomach is there, or there is some reflex is there, or there is some uh, uh, stomach is distended with some secretions or anterior uh, entritus is there. So that is a reason for colic. So animal that remain inside the stomach and animal rem will remain in a colic condition. So once um, this this uh, endotracheal uh, sorry not nasogastric tube, this nasogastric tube can relieve that distension and secondly that can also help us or guide us that if there is a lot of reflex is there it means there is severe obstruction is there so we might have to go for a for surgery immediately but if there is a uh, reflex less than two liter and that reflex comes only for one time and it's not a repeated reflex then we can continue with the medicinal treatment and secondly uh, this nasogastric tube can be used 
for infusing uh, some uh, liquid paraffin or some oil as well so that it can uh, lubricate the ingesta and if there is a partial obstruction or some complete obstruction is there because of some fecolith or some uh, impaction is there we need to lubricate and this nasogastric tube can be used as a uh, for for uh, for giving lubricant um, lubricant to the animal uh, so so and another thing is normally in our institution in gadwal so what we do is once we put the nasogastric tube we keep the nasogastric tube inside the animal until until unless the animal stop showing the colic sign because if there may be because there is some secretions if there is some gastric reflux is there we can immediately uh, decompress the stomach immediately if already there is a, um, there is a nasogastric uh, tube is there inside the stomach secondly another thing is if we need to refer or we need to perform the surgery in such a horses uh, because there is a lot of distension is there and if the we keep the nasogastric tube inside the stomach at the time of giving anesthesia when animal falls down so it prevents the rupture of intestine as well so that's why this nasogastric tube is very important for diagnosis as well at the time of treatment as well as the time of surgical treatment as well so this nasogastric reflux if there is excess of 2 2 uh, liter it means it's a suggest of them gastric outflow problem is there so color we need to see it's it's a green and green or brown color is normal yellow indicate some small intestinal reflux is there so orange that indicates it's a hemorrhagic intestinal disease is there normal ph is 4 4 and if there is a small intestine and the ph that becomes 6 to 8 uh, it goes towards the alkalinity then comes the parietal examination this is another important part of uh, so i am i'm telling you the serial wise what you should perform in a horse uh, in order to diagnose uh, the the site of obstruction and in order to diagnose uh, the prognosis uh, in in that particular horse so parietal whenever you need to perform the parietal examination uh so the first thing you should know uh that the horse intestine are quite fragile so you should lubricate your hand properly i will discourage using sablon as a lubricant on your hand because that can be an additional irritant to the gas to the intestinal mucosa so rather you can paint lignocaine jelly 2% on 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 your uh, on your sleeve and so that you it can act as a it can provide the local analgesia and it will help to reduce the straining as well it help to reduce so whenever you'll put the hand if you see here is the pelvic flexor if on the left side the first organ you will see is the pelvic flexor and even uh, so let's go further so when when you put the hand so this is i'm um, uh, from the front i'm looking from the front so this is the pelvic inlet this is the pelvic inlet on the left will be the pelvic flexor if you advance the hand further you will see you will go towards the left dorsal colon left dorsal colon and if you go further and you can easily uh, feel the medial uh, surface of the spleen and then you if you advance your hand further you can you can feel uh, the caudal pole of the left kidney and nephrosplenic ligament there is a nephrosplenic ligament this is also very important structure sometimes there is a left dorsal displacement of the colon is there and if you are not able to uh, palpate the nephrosplenic ligament it means or if you see if you uh, if you feel some part of the large colon in between the left kidney and the spleen it means it's a left dorsal displacement of the colon so on the right side on the right side cecum can be palpated so you can see palpation on the right side will be cecum and on the left side will be the left uh, left part of the colon and spleen and left spleen ligament and left kidney on the right you can only palpate the cecum only because cecum part will palpate will will occupy most of the right part of uh, uh, of the abdomen so now the next part is um, like uh, there is a, you can we can perform uh, the peritoneal fluid analysis so their color of the peritoneal fluid can also tell you like uh, the, the the changes which are going on inside the uh, inside the abdomen normal this is a normal it looks like a urine color straw color 
uh, and sometimes it becomes a cloudy, but if it becomes cloudy, then it means there is an increased cellularity, increased protein, neutrophilia is there, it means peritonitis is developing. And if it's a blood strain, so it means animal is having strangulation is developing, strangulation is developing. And it's a brown colored, it means already the, the, the intestine has ruptured or there is some perforation is there. And we can, we can in a normal condition, we can uh, go for cytology as well. And cell should be less than 7,500 per microliter and protein should be less than two milligram per deciliter. I'm talking about the peritoneal fluid analysis and neutrophils should be 40 to 80 percent and even lactate can also be estimated from the peritoneal fluid if lactate level is going up it means uh, it means there is some strangulation is there or intestine necrosis is uh, has started and because of the necrosis lactate li level likely to go up so even cytology can uh, can be done here this is a serial cytology which we did uh, in our at our institution so normal in normal horse da1 so you can say neutrophil or, or the uh, the neutrophils uh, they are quite less in number, but with the increasing um, day, or if there is some uh, peritonitis is developing, the, so the, the number of uh, neutrophils, they also um, increase in number. But if they, once they start responding to the treatment, the number also go down as well. So this can, the serial estimation of the peritoneal fluid can give you an idea about the prognosis in particular horse as well. Then blood examination, this is very important. TLC can be done, PCV can be done. So I always suggest that PCV, total protein, serum lactate, these three parameters, they are very much prognostic. They will tell you about the prognosis, which way the animal is going. So PCV, increasing PCV, increasing total protein, blood pro increasing serum lactate. It means animal is having poor or having towards going towards grave prognosis. But if the lac serum lactate level, I'll tell you the normal as well, serum lactate level is going down, total protein is going towards a normal level, PC will remain with the normal limits. It means animal is responding to the treatment and we can continue with the medicine treatment. Once the, uh, the level is going up, just for example, serum lactate level is going four millimole per, uh, per, micro, per microliter, uh, sorry, per deciliter. If it is more than four uh, micromole, it means animal is going towards surgical management means we surgery is the maybe the only way to manage that type of horses uh, so serum lactate i told you the serum lactate increases whenever there is some necrotic changes start in the intestine so another thing is creatinine kinase level can be optional it can be but there is no option to these three tests once start doing the test these tests can be done at a very remote village level if there is some human lottery is there, even that laboratory can be used for, uh, for estimation of PCV total protein and serum lactate in, in our horses. So if we start um, estimating these parameters, then we can save the animal. We can, we can come to know that our treatment, which are what medicinal treatment we are giving, then that, that animal is responding or not. So th this is how we can save the animal. So now comes to the... <clears throat> Uh, on your left side, green part, it will tell us uh, that when we should continue with the medicinal treatment. So if uh, you are giving a medicinal treatment, animal is remain a lot responsive, mild to moderate pain is there, and heart rate remains less than 60, mucous membrane is pink and remain moist, nasogastric reflex is less than two liter, color of peritoneal fluid is yellow and transparent, and PCV that remains between 40 to 50, and total, re total protein remain between five to 8.5 gram uh, per deciliter. It means animal is responding to the medicinal treatment. But once uh, the heart rate is above 70 and it is increasing and heart, after serial uh, estimation of the heart rate, it's going up. 
or injected mucous membrane is there and uh, there is a large volume of uh, nasogastric reflex is there more than five liter and there is absence of uh, intestinal or body gammy for more than 24 hours mean intestinal sounds you can't hear from the right flank from the right uh, lower flank or uh, lower abdomen or left flank or left lower abdomen it means intestinal sounds they are uh, they are absent it means animal is not responding to the medical treatment and perfectly even you found some that there is a mass is there or some distended part of small intestine is there or cecum is impacted or belly flexure is bigger than your hand and there is uh, on right side the cecum is quite distended and when you press it's quite doughy and then its impaction is there. It means there is some uh, severe impaction is there, which might not be relieved with medicinal treatment. So there is an increasing PCV. Uh, PCV is uh, more than 55 and total protein is going up and is more than 9.5. And it is a serial assessment of uh, blood lactate level. Uh, serial assessment, normally it should remain below 2 milli, uh, millimole. But once it is going up more than uh, 4, uh, it means animal is going towards uh, some uh, intestinal changes st have started. And once it is more than 7, then it means animal will be non-survival. So even the surgical treatment may not help in such type of animals. So this is a very important tool, uh, IV fluid, uh, central venous venous catheter of human, which can be used for horses. One thing you must take care that the, the body weight of animal is, is, is much, much bigger as compared to dog, small animals as compared to human. So, but uh, if we give the fluid uh, according to the size of, uh, uh, of the dog, then that may not work. In a 500 kg horse, which is not eating and uh, drinking because of colic for one day, it means consider that animal is 5% dehydrated. If animal is 5% dehydrated, 500 kg horse, it means that needs 25 liter of the fluid to replenish the dehydration. So in a normal horse, 25 liter just to replenish the, uh, the loss dehydration. It means then comes the maintenance part. So maintenance means whatever animal had the animal being healthy. It means that animal would have drank the water, would have ingested the food and fodder as well. So that that add to that part of the moisture inside uh, the calculated additional 25 means approximately 40 to 50 liter of of the fluid will be needed in, to a, in a horse with which is 500 kg per day if until the colic remain in that particular. And one thing more, if the colic starts. The best part, best is don't offer anything. Don't offer any food. Don't offer uh, any water. You can you can offer a little bit of water, but don't offer any fodder or any concentrate as well. So keep animal off feed and off water and start giving IV fluids. So that will solve most of the most of the problem. So. <clears throat> But the quantity of the fluid which you are giving that matters. If in a 500 kg horse you are giving 5 liter or 10 liter, that is that is not justified. So if a 500, 400 kg or 500 kg horse is there, so we need to give 40 to 50 liter in a day. So if we if we if we want to give proper medical treatment, so for that purpose we are using. <clears throat> triple human central venous catheter. So this human catheter can be used as a, for an infusion therapy and it can be uh, it can be put into the vein and that can remain and this catheter can remain inside the animal for 72 to 96 hours and we can continue to give fluid IV fluid using these catheter and these we, we have seen I have seen in my practice that these catheter had helped us a lot in saving the life of animals. So now comes to this is this is the chart will give you a fairly good idea how much fluid we need to give if a uh, PCV is 40 and uh, uh, and total protein is uh, less than 7.5 so there is no need for treatment watch for deterioration and if uh, if that uh, if it is 40 to 45 percent PCV 7.5 to 8.5 percent total protein is there then we need to give 20 to 40 ml per kg 
fluid uh, in a day i'm talking about so note for any deterioration 45 to 55 is the pcv 8.5 is to 9.5 gram per deciliter is the uh, is the plasma protein then we need to give 40 to 60 ml uh, per kg per day and if it is more than 55 more than 9.5 so we need to give at a shock rate 60 to 100 ml per kg we need to give uh, to heart so you just uh, uh, calculate so we need to give a lot of fluid as a medicinal part of the treatment so fluid is uh, i'll say uh, is is the first line of treatment and is the foremost line of treatment uh, while treating a colicky horse. So withdraw, uh, withdraw. If any, there is any uh, food is there. I already discussed. Twelve point of the colic, colic horse is then often associated with the change in the feed. Sometime, if you discuss it with the owner, you will uh, you will come to know that uh, approximately one tenth of the horses there is certain change in the feed is there. One type of order is giving, then they start giving another type of order, so the colic start appearing. So certain change should not be done. It should be a slow change because GIT uh, they uh, GIT bacteria they normally don't uh, abrupt change they don't uh, accept the abrupt change in the in the in the feed so that's why abrupt change can lead to colic in horses as well sometime if there is a lot of distension is there so under field condition 14 gauge needle can be can be trocarized can and we can take out the gas but that should be done under aseptic conditions so uh, if it is not done under uh, proper aseptic condition so chances of abscess formation can be there at the site of prick so fluid therapy has to be given so initially bolus uh, so fluid therapy, I already discussed. So according to the PCV, according to the level of total protein, we can we can give that particular amount of the fluid. So it initially uh, uh, 20 ml uh, per kg can be given as a bolus. Uh, in, just for example, eight liter for 400 in in <clears throat> first four hours, and then in next 20 hours we can give um, 800 ml. Uh, for uh, for uh, 400 kg horse per hour for next 24 hours so this this is how we can we can uh, continue with the, uh, the with the uh, with the uh, iv fluid uh, so even in critical cases hypertonic saline 7.2 percent saline can be given intravenously at the uh, at the rate of 3 to 5 ml per kg sodium is well tolerated by horses because the horses they sweat a lot and if they there is an excess of um, <clears throat> excess of sodium is given intravenous, even that they can be excreted easily by sweating. So sodium is well tolerated by horses, even if you give uh, hypertonic saline, uh, followed by uh, why we give hypertonic so that we want that the fluid should remain in the central compartment in the blood vessels. So first we give hypertonic saline, and then we give IV normal uh, normal saline, and then that will remain in the central compartment for longer time, and that will help us to overcome the dehydration, and that can hydrate the uh, of the intestine as well. Once the intestine is properly hydrated, then in, then peristaltic movement they start, and if there is a partial or complete obstruction is there without strangulation, then that obstruction can be relieved by proper hydrating the horse. Improvement in hydration can be monitored with the heart rate, PCV, total protein. So these three tests can be done and serial estimation should be done. Serial estimation depending upon the level of colic. If level of the colic is mild, then we can we the the frequency can be uh, can be after like six hours or eight hours. But if it's a moderate, then frequency has to be four hours or uh, for three to four hours. And if it is a very severe, then every one to two hours we might have to estimate the heart rate, PCV, and total protein. If it's a severe, means in order to uh, differentially diagnose um, uh, the, the strangulation. Once the strangulation is there, then the medicinal treatment is not going to work. So it's only the surgery, uh, surgical management need to be taken, um, <clears throat> taken care. So medicinal treatment. So first was the fluid. Second is analgesia. Uh, flu, uh, flunexin megalumin can be given. This is the fluid rate, uh, 1.1 milligram per kg every 12 to 24 hours, depending upon, uh, depending upon the, um, the severity. 
every 12 to 24 but a lot of flunexin can't be can't be given because it can these this flunexin can overcome the endotoxemia as well alpha 2 agonist xalazine datomidine can also be given so we can combine xalazine with bitorphanol as well this bitorphanol in order to have neurolepto analgesia and this combination it works really well i always recommend if you want to use xalazine use along with bitorphanol at the rate of 0.01 to 0.02 mg per kg intravenous and xylazine 0.3 to 0.4 mg per kg intravenous. So this is because xylazine, it has only up to two hours. It has effect up to two hours. But once you combine these two drugs, the, the duration of action uh, is up to four, five to six hours. So that's why we I always recommend to use a combination of. So medical management, lubricant also be given. So a combination of IV fluid along with lubricant can help to relieve the obstruction. Paraffin can be given five to 10 ml per kg every 12 to 14 hours. So <clears throat> avoid, if there is a nasogastric reflex is there, then we should not never give paraffin if there is a nasogastric reflex is there. If there is a, a nasogastric reflex is there and you pour paraffin oil, then you are further going to aggravate the colic. You are further going to aggravate the stomach distension. So that's why we should see if there is a nasogastric reflex is there, then we should never think about you giving uh, paraffin uh, by the nasogastric. Other laxative can be given, especially psyllium, if there is a history. Even the owner can tell you that this horse is having uh, habit of eating sand. And if there is a habit of eating sand, then psyllium, psyllium can be given. Uh, it's easily available in the market. Uh, so psyllium can be isbagol. We call it isbagol as a local language. So it can be given as one gram per kg every 24 hours in six to eight liter of the water. It can be given in case if there is a suspicion is there, there is a sand colic is there. And even if there is suspicion is there, even the fecal matter, if there is a manures are there or fecal balls can be uh, dissolved in the water. And if there is a sand colic is there, then chances are there sand likely to settle down on the bottom of the container. So there you can diagnose that sand colic is there. So even DOSS can also be given uh, orally. It can act as a lubricant. And here in our institution, we have established that lignocaine 2% intravenous can also be used as a prokinetic in order to increase the motility of intestine. It can be given at the rate of 1.3 milligram per kg as a bolus, followed by 0 0.05 milligram per minute at dose rate in IV fluid. It can be given simultaneously into the uh, into the bottles which you have you are giving as IV fluid bottles. So their lignocaine can, can be put inside those bottles and it can be act as a prokinetic as well. That was a medical management. Now comes to the surgical management. So surgical management, basically, uh, this is a, a first of all, uh, in our institution, what we do is we always apply a headgear so that whenever we give anesthesia, animal likely to fall down. So we have an induction chamber or induction room is there where the wall is wall are pile, uh, padded and even the floor is padded as well. So whenever we give xylazine and ketamine uh, or glycerin glycolate, uh, glyceryl glycolate as a muscle relaxant, so animal likely to fall down. So, so that there must not be any injury. We facial injury may not be there. We put head gear on the head, head of the animal, and um, so this this can prevent the facial injury uh, at the time of induction. So then we put the animal on a, on a um, pulley on a uh, on a monorail. We call it as a monorail crane system. So this will be uh, on upside down. We shift to the surgical table. On surgical table, we put on a dorsal recumbency. Then uh, endotracheal intubation is done. So normally the endotracheal intubation is already done in the induction chamber. And then we start immediately start with the positive pressure ventilation. So in positive pressure ventilation, we start with the six to 12 breaths per minute and tidal volume of the machine we keep at as 12 to 15 ml per kg. And simultaneously, we start with the IV fluids as well. So positive pressure, why we give positive pressure because whenever animal is put in dorsal decumbency already the animal <coughs> sorry already the intestines are quite distended and those in distended intestine can press the diaphragm and animal can have hard time in breathing in order to oxygenate uh, proper oxygenate we give start giving positive pressure ventilation immediately uh, um, at the time of maintenance of anesthesia 
then we give a, a, the one cut on the ventral aspect the first thing which you, you cut is the is the subcut fat is there and here is the peritoneum so then uh, what i want to discuss over here the blue part of intestine this one the blue part of the intestine uh, is the part of intestine you, which you can take up to the surgical site because i told you that the some part of the intestine of the large colon in horses they are you can't take out up to the surgical site so only the blue part this is the left part of the colon left ventral colon pelvic flexure cecum small colon small intestine these are the only part you which you can retrieve up to the surgical site but rest of the rest of the intestine means right part of the colon right ventral and right dorsal colon and both the flex flexure pelvic flexure uh, sorry uh, this sternal flexure as well as the diaphragmatic flexure you can't bring up to the surgical site so we have to manipulate accordingly uh, so through the part of which you can take out uh through the up to the surgical site so here is the first part in a normal horse first part which will come out to the surgical site will be the cecum see the cecum so it has a circulation see there's a circulation apex is there here is the base and this one is the body of uh, uh, body of cecum so this is the fourth i told you this is the fourth most common site of impaction so the first whenever you uh, give them see in the first part which will come out will be the cecum and cecum either it will have a gas or it will be impacted gas is there why it gas gas will be there because if there is impaction is there uh, after uh, a borel uh, a borel to that uh, to the cecum it means obstruction lead to the gas accumulation in um, uh in cecum but if there is a impaction is there impaction can easily be diagnosed once we take out the cecum up to the surgical site so then tiflotomy can be done to drain the first organ at our institution we drain is the cecum because once you drain the cecum then you have a lot of space into the into, into the abdomen to manipulate but if the cecum is not properly drained then then it always obstruct in manipulation manipulating the uh, abdominal organs the next organ which we should we can take out is the pelvic flexure so here if you see the huge impaction is there this is because this is circulation these are the circulations it means this is a left ventral this is left ventral colon and this is not circulated left dorsal colon another differentiation point is there this portion has band and this portion doesn't have no there is no band is there so that's why this is ventral part of the colon see how much impacted it is normally it looks like this pelvic flexure left ventral it looks like that and this is impacted part so this, that's why this is the most common site of obstruction because of decrease Look, just see you can appreciate the decrease in the diameter so this is already impacted is impaction is there but still you can see the the diameter has drastically decreased at this level so no next thing which we drain is we drain the pelvic flexure we drain the pelvic flexure uh, then we put the pipe water pipe inside so whatever the ingesta is there or impacted part of ingesta is there we take out and then we suture it then then we we close uh, the abdomen but before closing we always put the uh, drain because in in horses there is post operatively lot of fluid is formed because of the manipulation of intestine in peritoneal fluid lot of fluid will be formed post operatively if that fluid remain inside the peritoneum for longer time and that can ultimately convert into peritonitis so in order to uh, accumulate or accumulate accumulation of the peritoneal fluid we put the drain pipe so that whatever the fluid is formed it should come out of through that uh, foley's catheter so we keep this foley's catheter for 4 to 5 days depending upon the amount of the fluid if amount of fluid come stop after 3 days then we take it out if it continue then maximum we keep it inside the abdomen for 5 days then we put the uh, the gauze piece and um, and rule that the inside may not be soiled then this is the abdominal bandage which we put on the horses so that the the subcut edema sub post operatively subcut subcutaneous edema uh, is is a, is a very common complication but if we 
if we wrap the abdomen with this abdominal tape then then incidence or, or frequency or chances of subcut subcutaneous abdominal edema uh, reduces in order to prevent and protect the incision line as well so post operatively we uh, every day we perform uh, the the ultrasonographic uh, examination of the abdominal organs especially the intestine we see whether the intestinal motility is fine is there any accumulation of peritoneal fluid is there or not uh, or if there is any um, any other abnormality developing so every day we perform the uh, uh, the ultrasound um, examination of the abdomen so that will give you fairly good idea uh, about happening in the abdomen so then this was about the surgical management now but there i'll show you some specific causes interesting cases which we have dealt uh, in our at our place so this is this was the impaction this is the impaction of the left part of the colon left pelvic flexure uh, is impacted and left ventral is impacted as well see how much impaction is there so at our place in our place in punjab or uh, haryana and uh, rajasthan there is a there is a habit of giving wheat straw especially when the harvesting season is there now there is a harvesting season is gone uh, but the the farmer they gave a lot of wheat straw uh, to the to the even to the horses as well although we educate to the number of farmers that wheat straw should never be given to horses so this is the most common cause of um, of the pelvic flexure impaction in northern india so wheat straw impaction um, is the most common site uh, in most common cause of uh, uh, of pelvic flexure impaction then there is a, a fecolith is there you see the fecolith uh, here is the fecolith if you see there is gas distension in this part there is a gas distension is there a oral part uh, the oral part a oral part there is uh, intestines are collapsed because of the fecolith and some some of intestine because of the pressure necrosis of fecolith that led to the necrosis of uh, uh, of left dorsal colon so this was relieved and animal recovered really well so this was a case in which there is a left uh, colon was having a valvula c the necrotic and um, necrosis of complete necrosis along with mesenteric uh, congestion mesentery congestion is there so it 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 is a valvulus of a large colon and in such cases prognosis is very grave and sometime you have to euthanize such type of horses on the table so the, here too there is a segmental necrosis of pelvic flexure so this horse um responded to the resection of the pelvic flexure and animal responded really uh, i'll say satisfactorily uneventfully um, to the medical surgical treatment and this was a horse Uh, from the punjab police and this was horsing having a large colon torsion and it was presented us um, within 45 minutes it was presented to us and we performed the surgery and now the horse is performing its uh, police duty uh, and is hale and heart uh, healthy as well and this was the case in which pelvic flexure there was obstruction see the polythene was eaten and this uh, polythene has obstructed the pelvic flexure and uh, see the ropes as well and these ropes they likely to lodge into the small colon likely to lodge into the small colon and even polythene ropes and belts and and these type of horses normally the horses like uh, which are used in marriage purposes the horses they they poor people they normally they keep they they send the horse outside for grazing when they send the horse outside for grazing and chances are there they eat the foreign particles foreign bodies as well so these foreign particles or foreign uh, um, bodies they likely to lodge into the into the small colon so this is a fecolith fecolith is the is the third most common cause of colic small colon fecolith is the third most common first is the pelvic flexure second is the transverse colon impaction third is the small colon fecolith is the most common so see uh, even if you see the gas distension uh, oral to oral to the to the fecolith and aborted you can see it's collapsed it means the cause is this fecolith one we take to took out an animal and uh, the response uh, to the surgery in small colon i have seen personally that small colon surgery uh, if the cause is in small colon then chances of recovery is much much higher than the other causes of colic so 
and darolith is there some of the uh, some of the horses they are habit of eating the sand especially the uh, the sand which are having a, a lot of limestone is there or then calcium uh, is there in the in the sand so that ultimately slowly and slowly leads to formation of antarolith and these antarolith Uh, they likely to lodge into the small colon as well, or right ventral part of the colon, uh, right dorsal part of sorry, right dorsal part of the colon, or in the um, uh, in the in the small colon. So here is the intersection. Here you see uh, one part of the intestine is going to other part of the intestine. So this is intersection of the small intestine, and intraoperatively this is the volvulus of the small intestine. This is the volvulus of the small intestine. This is. Um, lipoma lipoma this is a disease of old horses the horses which are more than 14 to 15 year of age so they likely to they can develop lipomas and these lipomas they can they can press the intestine and even uh, the blood supply of that part will can be compromised and ultimately that can lead to uh, to the necrosis necrosis of part of intestine so lipomas in old horses can be the cause of severe colic so post operatively so first of all post operatively you have to seriously examine uh, physical examination need to be done uh, and uh, water uh, water uh, intake feed intake fecal production so these need to be monitored seriously uh, and blood examination should be done every 24 hours after uh, even after the surgery or even after treatment with medical treatment has to be so uh, fluid fluid deficit has to be replaced with iv fluids and ringer's lactate is the most common um, i'll say choice is a is a best choice for iv fluids so this is this can be given uh, at this rate 10 to 20 ml per kg per hour however rate can go up to 20 to 45 hours uh, for 5 kg per hour can be tolerated in adult horses as well. maintenance i mean this is for initially for to replenish the fluid deficit maintenance can be 2 ml per kg per hour so colloids can also be given these are the uh, especially in hypoproteinemic patients so colloids can also be given so that those colloids they have bigger molecular size and they will keep the fluid inside um, inside the, the 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 blood vessels for a longer time so non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs flunixel magnumin can also be given uh, <clears throat> at this rate twice a day as well post operatively so post operatively intravenous lignocaine can lidocaine or lignocaine can also be given to improve the gastric intestine motility bitorphanol can also be given as in behavior modifying as well as to decrease the cortisol level once because whenever there is a pain is there cortisol level that likely to go up when the cortisol level go up then intestinal motility that go down so in order to avoid such condition bitorphanol can be given post operatively in order to modify the behavior and as well as to decrease the cortisol level alpha 2 agonist zalazine datomedine can be given as a post operative uh, analgesic uh, so antimicrobial uh, can be given penicillin group along with the um, uh, amikacin or gentamicin combination can be given as a um, as antimicrobial so we usually give the combination of penicillin as well as um, uh, this aminoglycosides feeding can be introduced 8 to 12 hours of surgery fresh grass or alpha alpha hay should be offered every 3 to 4 hours water should be over offered immediately after surgery so uh, normally uh, i always recommend that fresh grass or hay of the grass is the best for horses alpha alpha hay is the best for horses so always discourage giving wheat straw baru grass uh, i'll say wheat wheat and uh, even um, uh, wheat flour it should never be given to horses because they can likely to uh, animal likely to develop uh, um, a colic after giving such type of fodder then prevention is very important first thing is avoid sudden change in the diet no feeding of wheat straw colic is more common in winter i have seen personally in my study as well we have seen that in winter season especially in the in the month of december january february uh, because north india they have a, a very severe winter uh, during these month uh, and there is a less green is there 
and um, and less water intake is there cold water is offered to the animal and reduced exercise is there so these are the causes when colic can happen so we what we have to do is we have to educate the owner that we need to give lukewarm water rather than giving cold water lukewarm water exercise should be there and there is there should be uh, green if the green is not available then hay can be given so hay should be there so rather than giving wheat straw start giving some hay or even uh, uh, this some part of the green part can also be mixed with the hay as well so this is this is the very important prevention for prevention so uh, this is the book which uh, dr tiwari has already mentioned uh, me and uh, uh, dr simra sagar has wrote this book and it's available on amazon as well and this will this is a very practical book especially for students for the field veterinarians who are dealing with horses in their practice daily practice so it will give you fairly very good idea that how to manage and how to diagnose a equine colic patient and if you are able to diagnose properly and if you are able to manage uh, manage properly then you can save i'll say 90 to 95% of horses so 5 to 10% of horses which require surgery it can be done only at the surgical facility or in the, at the level of uh, uh, i'll say university level uh, so uh, but medicinal um, medicinal treatment can be done at the field level and if medicinal treatment is done properly that can help to save the life of animal and even that can help in during surgery as well so this was all for uh, from my side i think I, I i am able to justify the topic so if you have any query uh just let me know so i can i can answer it thank you sir thank you for we have this presentation question we have uh, dr tiwari your your uh, voice is not audible so we have one question in chat box uh mm in chat box yes okay uh what is the chat box okay sir what is uh, the role of hypertonic saline yes the role of hypertonic saline is uh, that <clears throat> Uh, i told you that if we uh, give some hypertonic saline so that will even um, after that when we give the iv fluid it will keep that fluid into the vascular compartment